burst onto the world stage as one of the best cricketers of his generation. His life after leaving the crease, though, has been somewhat controversial and taken him into a very different world, politics. He's now one of Pakistan's foremost political leaders and has just written a book about the love of his homeland. Please welcome Imran Khan. <laughs> It's called Pakistan, a personal history, and it is indeed that. It's very much Pakistan through your eyes. It's a country which leaves most of us in this country confused by the very nature of its history, of its partitioning from India back in 1947. You were born five days later, so in a way you've grown up with that country, really. Well, uh, Pakistan was five years old when I was born. Mm. So my parents uh, were born in colonial India. I was the first generation which was born in an independent country, which was Pakistan. So my life, uh, really, and Pakistan grew together. We grew together. And so the book basically traces the sort of ups and downs where at one point we were the fastest growing uh, country in the developing world, the highest growth rate, and then how we sort of stalled and then started coming down. And right now it's, it's you would say it's, the uh, defining moment in Pakistan, if we, if we reform ourselves, the country could rise very quickly because there's lots of potential resources, uh, mineral wealth, uh, agricultural land. So it's, uh, if, if we can get rid of the corrupt political mafia, Pakistan can take off. Mm. But if we keep going where we are, I'm afraid uh, there's not that much hope. The book is packed with frustrations, as you just expressed, and anxiety for that particular country. There's clearly a great love for it. Your two sons have Pakistani names. How difficult is it bringing them up? Um, you know, are they living in England? Are they living in Pakistan? Are they living with their mother in England? They're living with their mother in England and they spend their holidays with me in Pakistan. Yeah. How easy or difficult is it to transfer your culture to them? And how important is it to you that they should be au okay fait with the culture of Pakistan? Well, they will, they, uh, the mere fact that their mother is English and I'm Pakistani, they were always going to be bicultural. Mm. But, um, uh, you know, it, uh, the, the whole question is, as Muslims growing up in a Western society, you see, I see no contradiction there. For me, a Muslim means being a good human being. All great religions want us to be good human beings. The message is simple, being compassionate and just. So um, this whole thing about clash of civilizations... It does tend to get distorted, though, doesn't it? I mean, you know, it, there's an uneasy relationship between Christian and Muslim the world over because of fundamentalists on both sides. I don't want to go down that avenue, but it is a difficulty. You seem very anxious that our perception of Pakistan should be improved on what it is. You see, I'm probably one of the few people who uh, understand the Western society. Was England, uh, London was a second home. I have family, well, I married uh, in England. But I also understand Pakistan like very few people do because uh, as a politician whose party is at the grassroots level all over the country, so I understand my country. Also, I understand uh, how Islam is perceived here mm. and how what Islam really is in Pakistan how it, it is distorted there too. So Islam, like any ideology, has been misused. For instance, uh, um, you know, um, a national socialism under Hitler, its objectives weren't what Hitler did with it. Or communism started off as a great concept of, you know, trying to uh, bring equality. But do you equality. really think you can change that? Do you think you can make a difference? Isn't, politi polit isn't po politics frustrating in that respect and that you seem to spend your life banging your head on a brick wall, almost whichever party you are? But, but you know, uh, the greater the goals, the greater the struggle. Uh, and this is what sports teaches you. There are no shortcuts. If you, have, if you want to read something and you have great ambitions, You've got to go through the mill and have, you know, the roller coaster which comes with the struggle. So there are parallels between cricket and politics, then. You can see them quite clearly. Had I not played 21 years of cricket and had I not taken my battering on ups and downs and, uh, and the struggle, and had I not learned to struggle in cricket, 
I would, could never have succeeded in politics. Mm. You talk in the book about, about many different things. The thing that I am very curious about is the fact that Princess of Wales came out there, Diana, when she was Princess of Wales. That clearly was a, a factor which helped a lot uh, in terms of raising awareness. Was it useful to you? Well, you know, uh, uh, we, we had struggled to open this hospital. This is the first cancer hospital in Pakistan and probably the only one where without government subsidy we, it gives free treatment. Um, and, but there was a bomb went off in the hospital. So about eight, nine people died and about 30 got injured. But, you know, after all this effort uh, of raising money and building the hospital, so we were really struggling. And that's when uh, Princess Diana, because she was close to Jemima's mother, Lady Annabelle, so they, uh, you know, she found out and she very kindly decided to come. Mm. And she came at the best time, and because of her, we could raise a lot of money and actually uh, uh, rebuild the hospital. You don't seem to have much time for many world leaders. Um, your view on Obama? Well, you know, we prayed for Obama. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, he's been, though he's been given Nobel Prize for peace, there's been more violence under him than under George Bush. <laughs> and Tony Blair? Uh, Tony Blair, too, I, you know, I thought, you know, the, this whole war on terror, you see, I never understood this concept. For, for what those criminals committed on 9-11, they should have been treated as criminals. The entire world, the Muslim world, I know, I was touring in Pakistan. All sympathies were with the U.S. But by calling them Islamic radicals uh, and raising their status to holy warriors, I think they just, the whole war was uh, uh, fought on the wrong premise. It, religion, the reason why they went into, into those towers, the reasons behind were not religious, they were political. And so the solutions were also political, not in some moderate Islam, which is basically what I try and argue in this book, mm -hmm. that right now a, a, a trillion dollars spent, over a million people killed, Two countries devastated, Pakistan, 35,000 dead in Pakistan. What, have this, what has this war achieved? And what do they hope to achieve by this war? In fact, the, um, I argue in the book that this war is creating terrorists. It's radicalizing people. Our country today uh, is imploding with terrorism, with fanatics. Well, we hope your own personal battle continues to good end. It's a fascinating book. Thanks very much for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, Imran Khan. Thank you. Thank you.